<laughs> Representative Kilduff, uh, and members of the committee. Um, there are uh, three names I want to remind you of from last year on bills that we spent most of our session working on. Those are Joel Reuter, Sheena Henderson, and Chris Henderson. These are all names that are familiar to Judiciary Committee members who've been on this committee for more than a year. All three of these people may still be alive today and with us if their families had been able to seek a protection order to keep them away from their dangerous weapons while they were in the deepest depths of their mental illness. And at UC Santa Barbara in May of 2014, my nephew Miller might not have had to stand and watch as a gunman drove down the street and killed someone else's niece. This bill would provide yet one tool, one more tool for families when in really rare circumstances they see their loved ones descending into extreme violence, they can do something about it. The bill would require a balance. We want to protect against the person who's exhibited extreme, uh, an extreme risk to themselves or to others for violence uh, or a, a extreme risk to the community. And we want to make sure that we ensure due process rights. Uh, both the, the gun lobby and my Republican and Democratic colleagues have always told me that uh, they would support reasonable, common sense gun laws that address mental health issues. I think this bill does just that and it achieves the right balance. You're going to hear from some people who think that it does achieve the right balance, some who say it doesn't go far enough, some who say it goes too far, and some who say we have to do a little bit more uh, to fix it and to get it quite just right. I want the committee to know that I stand ready to work with all of those people, but I also want the committee to know that only bipartisan support and work will assure that we can enact this common sense approach to keeping guns out of dangerous hands.